What's up? Chaos Zero. Hello guys and welcome to TGM the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about all play games and today we're gonna be playing Sonic Adventure. I almost said Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, this game is probably one of my favorite Sonic games and it's probably in my top 10 games of all time. Just because it's super important to me and I'm excited to let's play it for you guys. So this boss is pretty easy, you just wait for it to be vulnerable and attack it three times. Come on you big drip! Where you going? Nothing, fool! It's Chaos, the god of destruction! Into our first level we go, and yeah, <laughs> Emerald Coast. Now, first thing you might notice is that, well first, we're going extremely fast, and that is because Sonic's spin dash in this game is extremely overpowered. You'll see what I, I mean after this level, but yeah, if you just spam Sonic's spin dash, you should be pretty good in terms of speed. Also, you might notice that I'm playing this on the Dreamcast version and not on any of the updated, like, GameCube or PC re-releases. That's because the re-releases for GameCube, PC, etc. were just not that greatly made. Also, this part is super cool. During those automated sections, you want to hold forward. You don't want to hold like left or right or back or anything like that. Just hold forward and you should be fine. But yeah, the re-releases for this game were not that great. Like, if it's the only version you can play, then it's fine. But if you have a choice between the GameCube version and I missed those speed shoes, if you have a choice between the GameCube version and the... Uh, and the original Dreamcast version, I would personally suggest the Dreamcast version, just because, you know, the character models look a bit better, some of the textures look a bit better, 
There's a whole video documenting like all the different changes that went into the DX version of the game, so I'll put a link in the description to that. One thing I like about this game is that it's not too linear and you can just jump to different parts of the map. There's actually a pretty cool skip that you can do earlier on in the level where you can just skip a huge chunk. And that probably wasn't intended, but... Okay, that normally doesn't happen. I'll be right back. Anyways, I'm back here. Normally I'm fairly good at this game. But I guess just since I'm commentating, I've gotten worse, like much worse. Anyways, we have Tails here, and if you jump and then turn around, you can pose right in front of Tails' unconscious. You can pose right in front of Tails while he's unconscious, is what I meant to say. Yeah, not bad. So yeah, while, while I do prefer this version, I'll admit there are some things that still, like, that are the same between the DX version and this version that aren't that great. Like, the weird mouth movements. Like, this game was made in 1998, but I could admit that it hasn't fully aged real well, but I still love this game, despite all its flaws. Uh, speaking of flaws, uh, you'll remember earlier how I mentioned Sonic's uh, spin dash? Uh, and you can s see how fast I'm going. Like, I'm just zipping across the street. So, a cool thing, and I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off here, is if you stand on these stairs, spin dash, and then jump right as you hit the wall, you'll get, ru you'll get shot up, and then you'll get on top of the roof. Sort of like that, but... Right there. You have to do it at a bit of an angle, and sometimes you'll stand on top of the roof, sometimes you'll clip through. Uh, either way, it's a fun thing that I like to do whenever I play through this game. The train headed for the Mystic Ruins will be departing soon. So yeah, right here we have the train station, a place you'll be seeing a lot of throughout this Let's Play. It allows you to go between Station Square, the city, and Mystic Ruins, the, well, ruins. So normally you're supposed to go down the stairs that are in front of the train, but you can just go in fr front of the train and, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, but what I was trying to say was you can just go in front of the train and then spin dash over here and start the next cutscene. <laughs> if it isn't Sonic! Look, it's a giant talking egg. Silence. I am Dr. Robotnik. The greatest scientific genius in the world! Whatever you say, Eggman! Enough! I've got this plan! And now, I'm gonna put them to work! You're always up to no good. Now what do you want? I want all of the Chaos Emeralds! Better not interfere! Or else! Or else what, you big loser? Or else I'll take them from you by force! The hard way!
It's time for our second boss fight, the Egg Hornet. Now, if you thought the first boss fight was easy with Chaos Zero, you are going to laugh at this boss fight. This boss fight is a pushover. All you have to do is get him to go towards you and then spam A. I did it incorrectly. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, if you spam A at the right tempo, then uh, it can just spam attack the Egg Hornet. And then it'll correctly, it'll beat it down within a couple of seconds. Well, that wasn't so hard. Oh no! Chaos? Oh no, isn't that the same monster I saw the other day? Oh yes, it's just as the stone tablets predicted. <laughs> Strength increases every time I feed him a Chaos Emerald. With all seven emeralds in him, he'll be invincible and work for me. Together, we'll destroy Station Square. And on its ruins, I'll build Robotnik Land, the ultimate city, where I will rule it all. Come on, Chaos, let's find another emerald, shall we? Get away with this, can we? No way, Tails. Without more emeralds, the monster can't transform. So it's up to us to get the emeralds before Eggman does, huh? So within the first 15 minutes of the game, we've basically set up everything you need to know about the plot. Dr. Eggman or Dr. Robotnik or this one, this game is a weird one because uh Actually, I'll explain the Eggman Robotnik thing in a minute. But yeah, Doctor, the do the Doctor is going after the Chaos Emeralds to feed to Chaos so that he can destroy the city, and Sonic and Tails have to get the Chaos Emeralds before him so that he can't do that. Stage two, Windy Valley. So our goal now is not just to get to the end, but it's also to the, get the Chaos Emerald, which coincidentally is also at the end, so... But later we'll have to do certain things to get to the Chaos Emerald. Here's a cool on automated section, you just have to hold forward and it'll bring you right along. But yeah, the villain of this series is... Something I'll talk about in a second, because we have other fish to fry right now. Right over here we have a tornado, which sucks us up. And now our goal is to escape it. We have to bounce all the way to the top, and then once we get, it, get to the top, we'll be able to jump out, I guess is the explanation for it. Can I just say I love those little uh, jump pad things where like you jump on panel number one and then you jump on panels two and three like when you do it quickly it looks really cool now that we've gotten out of the tornado now it's just a race to get to the end not a man i am sucking at this game now that i'm recording it what i was gonna do is show that you can jump from part to part to skip uh, some semi-huge sections of this. But anyways, what I was going to say before about the villain of the series is that when the first Sonic the Hedgehog game released in Japan in 1991, they named the villain Dr. Eggman. And 
then when it got ported over to, not really ported, but when it got translated and brought over to the West, they renamed him to Dr. Robotnik, which I think is a cooler name, but they also left in, in the classic Genesis games, like the name Dr. Eggman, like you'd see that all of his inventions were named after, like, his Japanese name, like, like he rode around in the Eggmobile and stuff like that, and he had the Death Egg. But by the time that they got to here, it would be weird for it to, for them to, like, keep changing his name to Dr. Robotnik. So what they decided to do was make Dr. Eggman his name, uh, uh, his name by making it a name that Sonic calls him. And then eventually by Sonic Adventure 2, he just starts calling himself Eggman. Anyways, Chaos Emerald Acquired. So now that we're done with that, we're going to head back over to Station Square. Also, if you ever not know where to go, that was a weirdly phrased thing, if you're ever at a loss for where to go, come over here. This is Tikal. She is an orb of light that will tell you where to go. Go to Station Square. You may find something. And find something we will. Just got to make your way up the stairs and then run right into the train. This Let's Play might be a bit weird and my commentary might be a bit weird because this is my first time after, what, like seven or eight months of me just not doing much commentary because during my Ace Attorney Let's Play, I barely commentated at all. I just read the text and then occasionally chimed in with something. But with this, all I have to worry about are the cutscenes, and other than that, I just have to run on my own. So we jump down into the sewer, and this somehow leads us to our next, to our first power-up, sorry, the light speed dash. Now you've got light speed shoes. Press and hold the action button to store up power. Once you have enough power, release the button and you can do the light speed dash. The light speed dash lets you race toward rings at light speed. As long as there's a trail of rings, you can go just about anywhere. So we want to go ahead and press this button, and that'll give us a line of rings that allow us to exit the sewer. If you hold down B for long enough, Sonic will look like this. If you stand in front of a trail of rings and let go of B, normally he'll do what he's supposed to, but I guess... The game doesn't want me to do it because whenever I play games for a let's play, it all I'm I always suck at them. Like normally that never happens. Like I get up to the top in like on the first try. But now that I'm recording for a let's play, it's just not working for me properly. <laughs> Anyways, that power up the light speed shoes are required. What's not required is an extra upgrade you can get for the light speed shoes. If you press these two buttons, one will open those doors, and then one will give us a trail of rings. Interesting thing to note is that when you do the charge up for the light speed dash, all of the little orbs that fly around you can press the buttons. So you just want to press both buttons, follow the trail of rings, and normally I would have gotten in there, but. Anyways, this allows me to show off that uh, an interesting thing you can do to bypass the whole thing over there is there's a button on the inside that allows you to open the doors, and if you stand like at this corner and hold down B, one of the orbs will open up the door for you, so that's an interesting little thing for you. This is the crystal ring. This reduces the time needed to store power for the light speed dash. So yeah, now we can do the light speed dash much quicker. And while I'm in this area right here, there are a couple things that I need to mention. One, our next level is right over there, and we'll get to that in the next episode. 
But an interesting thing that I didn't even know until doing research for this series is that there was Christmas DLC that released in 1998 and 1999 respectively, where not much happened except they just put Christmas trees all around Station Square and I think they hung some lights up. And I thought that was just a nice little thing. But anyways, I think that's about all we're going to do for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and go into the casino, our next level, and see if we can find another Chaos Emerald. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!